Matthew. This is a review for your Saris game. So I have to start off by saying, uh, coming into this, I had no idea how you played, and I was pleasantly surprised, like mega pleasantly surprised, uh, at how well you heal on Saris. I think you are a natural uh, support main. <laughs> so it was really pretty fun watching this game actually. So it's a long game. I'm going to jump into it. Um, your loadout. Soulforge 5, good. You have Veil and Dark Whisper, both good. I would suggest moving one more point into Dark Whisper. You, like, you'll really feel the difference in movement speed from 40% to 60%. And you have Fade to Black, which is also good. And then you have Spirit Leech. I don't really see the point in Spirit Leech, especially at one, but okay, so here, here's the thing. You don't have any self-heal, and out of the five cards that you chose, Spirit Leech is definitely the most dispensable. It's like a, oh, it's kind of nice to have, but Ceres isn't Furia. Uh, her damage just doesn't hit the same, and uh, the because, it's almost like because you have no self-heal in this deck, you kind of rely on out of combat a lot, which means you can't afford to heal or sorry, afford to left click as much. So please take out Spirit Leech and put in one level of self heal. It's very strange that you don't have any self heal. Uh, other than Grover, who just heals himself for exactly as how much he heals everyone else, every other healer has some kind of self heal card in every healing deck needs some kind of self-healing thing. Like Domba, he has gourds. That's a little bit different, but you know what I mean. Um, I would recommend, so for my philosophy on Saris decks is you need Soul Forge 5, you need Veil and Dark Whisper both at three. Like having played around with the values, like three on each is just like, it just works. And then you have four points to play between self-heal and fade to black. I would argue that you just tweak these, it's just a sliding scale of how much you put in both, and it really depends on how much self-heal you feel is necessary. Apparently you feel comfortable with no self-heal, but I would recommend you try level 1 of self-heal and level 3 of fade to black, and it'll feel really good overall. Anyways, let's jump in. So the biggest things I noticed for you were just where to place your ults and then in general where to position as Saris. And then like one other minor thing, sort of. But your heal prioritization was really good for the most part, I think, in terms of the actual healing. You were great. If I had you as a healer on my team, I'd be pretty happy. So at the end of every round, you sit here, or at the beginning of every round, you sit here. I dislike that immensely. You should follow your team up into the keep fight. You think you have better line of sight here, but you're so separated from your team and like you could easily be flanked like being completely behind people and also you actually have very poor lines of sight into keep. I don't know if your team played less in keep because you weren't there or they just didn't play in keep. Okay, you should have hit F as soon as you felt the, you know, the <laughs> from the poison bolts. That was like the minor thing. Like you just you didn't hit F fast enough a lot of times. Sorry. Like just mash it. Defend. That's one Enemy other thing I noticed you did. You would hit F and you use your shadow travel, use that speed and and in, in, in vulnerability to get line of sight on someone. That's just really risky. Uh, I can't say I don't do it at all, but you should use it a bit more sparingly. I understand you have Fade to Black 4, but still, there's just, sometimes there's just no reason to use it. Like, both of the times you tried, you tried using it already this game, 
I just didn't see a point. Just for the extra speed. Like, you itemize really well. Like, you, you know to buy Nimble. Alright, I have to pause it right there. Because I have to show you. Was it really like right before? Hold on. Okay, so you have the right idea, which is actually like something I totally would have done also, which is when, like after you wait out the Grover ult, then you ult, and it's amazing. <laughs> okay. All right, so you ult like right after this. I think you place ult somewhere here or here, I don't know, but it was like really lopsided. If you see someone here and here, try to aim like, Try to do like really fast uh, geometry in your head. Like find the point in the middle where the two people are. So like try to aim for your alt to land here. So it pulls this guy this way and this guy this way. Okay, yeah, you aimed it like really far <laughs> over. So like only an R gets pulled in. If you aimed it here, they both definitely would have gone in. Because Khan just was too far away. This is this is a good shadow trouble because you're using it to get out of damage. So that one I you, I do this a lot too, where like you think you channeled Koa, but really you channeled Tyre because they're on top of each other. Fine, it happens. Oh, one thing I noticed was Vivian didn't get any cauterized, and that probably won you guys the game, to be honest. Because she's like such a good cot applicator. It makes her sound like a tool, but like she was shooting you guys, like she had, she was shooting the right people, but no cot, so. And you were good at healing the people she was shooting. This is not terrible because I don't, it, like, it was just an Anara. And I don't think she could have killed you. So that shadow travel for heals was okay. 30 seconds remaining. This is all fine and dandy. I don't, that shadow travel is completely unnecessary, especially because Anara like walled off, so she, that, that wall is actually good for your team because it gets you guys out of caught, out of damage, really. Weird as fuck Anara ult. <laughs> the shadow travel is okay. You're just repositioning. Like you wanna, you're in too deep. It's, it's actually good that you let your teammates die because they were, again, in too deep. Okay, at this point, what you wanna do is you wanna move your way up your stairs, like in that direction. You keep sliding towards the left and that's just not where you wanna be. You're A, too close to the action when you don't have to be because you can get like completely fine lines of sight. Okay, when you shout over here, you have like no idea where you want to go because you already kind of missed your chance to go to the stairs here. Well, I don't, I don't mean like sit on the stairs. I mean like go up the stairs and heal from. Uh... All right, let me show you where on the stairs. you can see god damn but you just kind of they're like boxes <laughs> I, I don't think your camera turns this way anymore but if you go up the stairs and like keep going um there are boxes there if you just heal from behind those boxes you get line of sight down here and if someone wants to play up top here so that's where you should have gone and not gotten stuck in the bottom left the bottom left of your base is definitely not where healers want to sit So even here, you probably could have, I'm not sure, you probably could have made it to be honest. 
You have Dark Whisper 2 instead of 3, so I'm not entirely sure, but it was, it was possible. Alright, you tossed that when you had like no health left, and I would have just saved that. Also, look at where you threw it. You th like, they're in your face. It would have been better if you just, honestly, even if you threw it right here. But their enemy team is pretty close to you, and you tossed it like behind the cart, essentially. So that ult, I don't think, hit anybody, and you were going to die after it. Like if you're if that was like a desperation ult, they're probably closer than you think. So even if you just toss it in your face, it would have been better. Or just not ult. So yeah, I think you could have definitely had more impact and maybe saved that push if you had not positioned down here but gone up here. I'm trying to point out the boxes when you leave spawn. Maybe, sort of. Running in 15 seconds. I like Nimble 2 and I like Morale. Like, those are all good. Five, four, three, There's two, some smaller one. maps, like Bright Marsh and Jaguar, by Morale first sometimes, depending on their team comp. Alright, yeah, see, see these boxes? If you go up the stairs and just heal from here, behind here, you're very safe. And then you also have um, access to your spawn door behind you. Okay, again, you, like, stay here. I have no idea why. You're just so isolated from your team. Good hitting at faster, but you're just in a really bad place. So I said, I mentioned I liked your prioritization. But you could have also bought Illuminate and Haven earlier. I think you wanted <laughs> Ash to leave the point and she doesn't. I don't know what that was. I okay. Maybe you were gonna leave and heal them, but even so you didn't need um, you did not need to hit your F for that. What is it? Saying? Oh, you could have gotten Illuminate. You ended up buying Haven 3 at the end, which is good. I like that. But Illuminate, even if Sky wasn't on you that much, Sky actually can, or Sarah's can actually handle Sky pretty well. Like if you see Sky attacking your teammate, uh, if she's not really looking at you, you can melt her decently. <laughs> It's actually fine you weren't on Halo. You, you stayed safe. Nothing wrong with that. Alright, I would have hit F and gotten the fuck out of here. So, you see her, you feel her shooting on you, and I guess I can slow play. And you look up, and it's just very slow. And you, and you don't know like where to go necessarily. Sometimes when you hit F, when you're trying to evade damage, you look kind of confused as to where to go. Maybe that's just um, if you play Cyrus more, or you get more comfortable with the maps. I don't know. You'll get more used to like having muscle memory. Have you met my friend? So that play, you see her, you should like immediately hit F and either, uh, sorry my thoughts are kind of long and non-ending, so you should have just like either come here, hide behind this wall, I think you could have made that, uh, otherwise it was okay that you ended up here, but don't just sit here because like you saw she just dropped on you and killed you, yeah. Here, the Vivian just has high ground, and one of your tanks and DPS needed to push up there. Um, you, I don't like where you walk to, although you ended up in an okay place, but you walked through all of them, and they definitely saw you. So instead of walking through all of them, you could have backed out into, into this area, which is much safer, and then you could have come around and healed from here. Or you could have even, like, 
backed out this way instead of into this little room. There's just no one there, so someone could have flanked you. Goodbye. I noticed he also had a hard time deciding what to buy. <laughs> Again, Haven, Illuminate. Ten, Any of those? Nine, eight, you have seven, so many credits. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Over time! I'm glad you did not ult. I'm glad your team did not ult. Oh no, JK, Ash ulted. That was just honestly a waste of all. Like, I, I think I agree with your decision to heal Koa first. But because that had to happen, Ash is ult. Ash's ult was more useless. It was already kind of a waste. Okay. That's fine. Moral 3 is good. One. Go into keep at some point ever. You definitely have more teammates on the right side than the left. And you definitely can't see them or heal them. One other thing is you don't hit Ren's soul very often. Especially because you have no self-heal. You should definitely use it more liberally to give you that heal. And also because you weren't running any self-heal, you might have considered picking up Veteran at some point. Given your loadout, I just I just think you just should chuck that one card and have one point of self-heal. Even then, Veteran's okay on Theris. Hit a I think because you have phase of black four, you have it up so much that you're using it not super uh so back to the hole. Alright, oh, one more. Let me pause to show you right. Okay, you threw it here. You see two people here. Throw it here. Like right in the middle. The idea was good though. I just don't really necessarily understand why you throw very lopsided ult. I just say your Koa was uh he made a good choice with your cash shell with this guy, I think. I think. That voice pack scares me every time. <laughs> he says overtime. Escort? Escort? Oh, man. All this is good. Again, I really like your heal prioritization. It's so nice to watch. I think you got Ash instead of Koa there. Again, it happens. tried your darnest to save Ash, who was completely overextended, so. <laughs> A for effort. Alright, I think you overheal Tyra sometimes. I don't know why Tyra, but you just do. One other thing is, as support, um, scroll back a little bit. So as support, to do okay as support you want to be the like the janitor kind of like the guy who cleans up all the crap so what i mean by that is you see this drone right here vivian drone it takes like one orb it's like it has no health but you just you see this revealed right and you see the drone right in front of you just kill it um 
Same with like Barrack Turrets, Inara, Fields, any, any deployable supports are very good about, or very, they're just like, they don't have anything else really to shoot, so those things are good targets to shoot at. Alright, another very lopsided ult. I don't know if you are aware that you're throwing ults like up against the wall, like on the left side. If you threw it here, there's actually a good chance it would have pulled in Vivian, I think. I don't think she's blocked by anything. I'm not sure how far out this statue goes if it would have blocked it. We just tossed it right here. That would have been amazing. But this will only pull in Khan. I think Inara is even out of that range. Yeah. Okay, so you could have just had more impact there with that old. That was a good attempt for your team to push. It was just the Sky ult. Sky had good ults to save stuff. You could have actually saved that Tyra. Watch. Like here, uh, if you didn't come all the way across here, if you just peeked this, you had a sight line to save her. I don't know if it would have mattered, but it's just something you could have done. And she does. I mean, there's nothing wrong with what you did because you got out. So at this point when you see revealed, I don't know, I probably would have tried to at least look around for where the drone is. That shallow travel was okay. I feel a bit unnecessary. Your Koa was not like an imminent danger. I would have actually hit F kind of reflexively when I see an Anar ulting pretty close to me because her ult can go like past, like it can go around a corner essentially. That was a nice kill on Grover. So, I don't know why you're on cart. You're a bit- sometimes you tend to be a bit close to the action. Just in general. Like, here there's no reason for you to be on the cart. This- like, your whole team is contesting. And really you only need one person at max, like, both tanks on cart. But you could have just healed from the doorway, honestly. Like, that far away. And still had- the same impact. Or yeah, if you wanted to heal from that little side area, not the best line of sight, but you could have wrangled it. We need to get back in the fight, right? Buy something. Okay. No, yes. <laughs> no, buy it. <laughs> you know we want to hit it. <laughs> I am no okay, good. <laughs> I don't know why it took you so long to commit to another I don't <laughs> oh one other thing I noticed is sometimes you some people are really good about like starting a channel on somebody and then taking cover Five, four, if that makes any sense three, to you but doesn't two, think about it <laughs> uh, so you know that like you only need line of sight to start the heal and then after that you can be anywhere <laughs> So you should probably try to get into more of a habit. So here, like Vivian pushes you and you're so far away from your team, no one can really help you. I guess someone did, but I don't like that ult because it was just the Inara. I didn't see the con, but he wasn't even pulled into the ult. I don't know. It was kind of a uh, unnecessary ult. Again, you're really close to the point for no apparent reason. I 
Oh, what did I say? So what you can, what you should try to get into more of a habit of, it's, it's just a nuance or subtlety. It's not like, it, like I'm not saying you're feeding because you're really not. It just helps you in general if, as you play more Saris. Maybe not this game, but maybe in other games where you, like, yeah, you'll, you'll, you can actually, hold on, you can actually, this is good. You can actually just heal from here more or less, like use this corner as cover. So you can jump up and get a, get a channel on the Koa and then you can just back out into here so that they don't have line of sight on you. You tend to, I'm not sure if like you're, you fully understand how far Mortal Reach's range goes. Like, you don't have to be this close to point. Maybe you are on this one because you want to touch if necessary. But I feel like because you do it like the whole game. So if you hadn't used the ult before, you could have just used your ult at any point during that last stretch. So like, for example, if you had your ult up, um, I would have used it even earlier. Okay, you see Ash coming in. I wouldn't have tried to go for a contest as soon as you see a thing. But you see, <laughs> vaguely, these three people throw an ult right here. Like, perfect ult. Gets them off point, gets all three people, like, close to you instead of going for a contest. Anyways. And you guys actually managed to win this point because Koa saves it. Yay. I liked your Koa. For sure. Enemy killing spree. Now this ult was a bit overkill. Honestly. Here's an Anara above you. Yeah, you overheal the Tyra again. I don't know why Tyra is so special. <laughs> you just like, you always like channel like the full amount on her. I have no idea why. And it's not like she's taking damage and like she needs it. That's what I mean. Now you stop that channel on Koa. You give Tyra the whole thing. <laughs> You see reveal, you see this drone to kill it. It's just like I'm I'm kinda nitpicking because these are just you're already really good at the basics of Saris and healing and stuff, so I'm just trying to tell you other things that you could be doing. Okay, I like that Q. I think you just could have used it more that game. You could have altered there, if you see it. Maybe. Right. What did I do? Okay, so, oh god, the graphics. <laughs> uh, whatever. I think I skipped forward and said back. It's whatever. That's a good cue for sure. It is like the worst feeling as someone on the other team when you have like when you're like one shot and then you have orbs attached to you and then the Sarah hits Q and you're like shit. Again, just stop like right here and just heal from this doorway. Try it. If feels the same, I promise. I don't like that ult. It's really, because they're already coming down, it's really hard to like, like ults can definitely pull people down. I've never seen a Sarah's ult pull people up. Like not from like a ledge or whatever. So yeah, 
that was the game okay i thought there was like one more round or something but yeah again i thought you healed like the healing part was really really good there's just like some small things for you to fix uh your positioning was kind of wonky and by that i mean at the start of rounds you should follow your team into where most of the fight is going to happen so like on stone keep it would be into the keep on other maps like jag falls you might want to follow them into dark side or um on split stone as there's either you want to stay top or like lower quarry there's just like some areas where healers sit it's just like the typical positioning as healers where you get maximum line of sight so on on stone keep if you follow them right side you can heal anyone any fight going on there unless they're like they they go over the over the stairs in which case it's a little bit a bit tougher but it's doable um you could also get good line of sight if you go onto your stairs leading up to the keep you can get line of sight onto the left side end point obviously or you can go up to the to the bell tower the the very the very top of it uh yeah please take some self-heal at least level one i was gonna before i watched this i was thinking you're probably like most saris players run level like three or four self-heal i was gonna come in and say drop it to level two <laughs> and eventually work your way down to level one but very uh <laughs> It was very outside of my expectation that you're running zero. So I'm like, please run it at level one. Uh, and even try it at level two. See how that feels. But yeah, one is recommended. And then your Fs. So your shadow travels. Use them a little bit less in order to reposition for a heal. It's a little bit like Domba Slither, except... It, you have, there's more cooldown on it, and also it's, it's, it, it is different. It's just, it's somehow just different. Like, for Domba, it's more okay to use your slither to reposition, assuming you're, you're safe after your slither. But Saris, because she has so much speed in her kit, and you buy Nimble, because you don't need Kronos, so she has so much, like, ability to get speed you don't you shouldn't have to shadow travel for more speed and if you're shadow traveling for invulnerability to get somewhere from where you are to where they are either you are not where you're supposed to be or they're not what they're supposed to be so don't put yourself out of position if it's the latter and if you're not where you're supposed to be figure out like you have so much range on mortal reach like figure out better like places to sit to get sidelines and then what, after you hit your F, sometimes when you use it for to escape damage, you just look very lost. As the game got on, you got better about hitting it earlier, but you just look lost as to where to go. Like, first of all, don't go in a circle. Don't go back to where you were, because most likely the person is still there who is shooting you, and they'll look there first. So get somewhere safe, behind a wall, a corner. Like, if you turn a corner or two that's probably your best bet uh and then the other thing is other than beginning of round positioning your positioning during fights you are too close to the fight most of the time again you don't need to be right there you have so much range on mortal reach you're really close to the point and then like when you guys are pushing in you're like sitting on the cart there's no reason to do that so play back more and it'll feel better. And then again, your alts just try to think about uh, the midpoint of like choosing your head, like which targets you're aiming for. And then like <laughs> do some really, really quick math in your head and figure out where the midpoint of all of those people are. It'll feel really nice when you can hit like a mega fat like three or four person, Sarah Saltz. All right, that's it.